everyone welcome back to chicken cindy's and i think it's finally time we not only review this huffy scalp but let's go over what all i did to it and see what you can learn from my mistakes and the different things that i would recommend and not recommend to do to this very cool bike So to start with this bike, I'm going to go over the things that I changed that are easy changes that I would recommend you to do. So IXF crank set for $60 on Amazon, they have been terrific. I've had a lot of people ask me how I got this black on the outside, or, and I literally just took a permanent marker and colored it. So as you can see, it's kind of fading, but I didn't like the silver, so I just did that, and it's fine. I got these pedals off of Amazon for $20. So the drivetrain right here is very budget friendly. I did change to this blue, uh, uh, what is that, a half link chain, that's what it's called, a blue half link chain. And I just really like the look of it to go along with it. So that's why I did that. So let's talk about the rear here. So this wheel set is the Black Ops wheel set and it's from City Grounds. It was about a $200 wheel set I think it looks terrific, but it was kind of a headache to get set up. So being a flip-flop hub, this side of the hub where I have the actual disc brake rotor at, there is an extender in here. It's called an e-bike adapter to push this out a little bit further. And this is just a freewheel adapter for the brake rotor itself to get this to work and I had to push it out. Now, this disc brake or the rotor onto that adapter, scooting it over, I actually had to file down the inside. Let's see if I can get around to it. I had to file down right above the screws to get this flush or to get it to screw on all the way. Now, in my honest opinion, keep the wheel set uh don't change the wheel set especially if you're thinking about changing the wheel set to the black ops ones just because they do look nice i mean i got it to work but i definitely had to rig some stuff and the other wheels that come with it are absolutely fine the tires that it comes with are absolutely fine if you keep the wheel set that it comes with and the tires that it comes with that automatically shaves about 250 dollars from my build compared to your build and those were the two main upgrades that I did that I will say you do not need to do at all. Those ones were 100% preference and they were 100% just because I thought it would make them make this look good. It definitely did that. I think it makes the bike look absolutely awesome. But 100% not necessary and 100% caused me more of a headache than it should have. But I will have links to those things if you decide you want to do that. But like I said, I don't recommend doing it, but it is what it is. So the way... I got this to work without a tensioner. I've had a lot of people ask about that. So the way the wheel drops in, it starts a little here and then goes back and up. So the angle to that is kind of like this. So whenever you have the bolt right here, you can fit the chain on and it won't be super tight. When you put it in here, it will be tight. So I have a 32 up front and I have a 14 in the back. And for the actual tension, it's pretty well perfect so you can see there's a little give in the chain but there's no chain slap really or anything like that uh, it spins the way it's supposed to so that was just one of those things where it worked uh, the good thing is this does have a hanger so if for some reason you can't get your tension right you can obviously just throw a tensioner on there they sell them on Amazon for what 10 12 bucks I actually have one and I had it for this in case I couldn't get that to work but I was able to get that to work so that's one way you can kind of use the frame style to your advantage because like I said, how that bolt starts a little lower and when you push it up, it kind of makes it more snug. So that's pretty much the rear end, the way I have it set up, the cranks that I have set up in the pedals. So let's go to the actual seat and saddle and what I did there. All right, so as you see here, I have a SDG dirt jumper styled saddle. You'll see I do have a different style seat post and I also have a blue seat post clamp. Now, if you have this bike, you'll notice on the frame itself, the seat post clamp is actually welded to the tubing. So I took a saw and chopped it off. 
Don't recommend doing that, but that's what I did, and I'm letting you know what I did to this bike. I was able to do it right below the seat post clamp, and actually it had enough of the slit that I didn't have to dremel anything out. So when I put this new seat post clamp on, it still works the way it should. It's probably hard to see that in there because it's so dark, but you can see that that little slit in the steel frame is still there. So I got the different seat post because I didn't like the looks of the other one, and I got the new seat because I wanted a dirt jumper styled seat. And actually, one of the people that watched quite a few of this recommended that I do that. So I kind of looked into it a little bit more and I found this SDG one and I just loved the way it looked. So I grabbed that. All right, back to the Black Ops wheels again, because obviously this is the front Black Ops wheel. This one worked absolutely fine. Uh, you can see it's a little longer here on both sides. I would imagine that is because it is for pegs because I got that from City Grounds and I'm pretty sure they're BMX styled rims that's why the backs flip flop that kind of a situation so but works fine screwed on fine not an issue uh i grabbed the manitou markhor m30 fork i got it off ebay for 250 230 i think it was 230 actually free shipping and this fork is a tapered fork now the headset or the head tube on this bike is not tapered okay the top is 44 millimeters the bottom is 44 millimeters it's one and one eighth inch it is what some people would call a faper head tube which is just a fake taper so i found a fsa headset adapter that is 44 millimeters and it goes into the bottom like a normal headset would but it extends down to the bottom just a smidge so it will fit a tapered actual fork so that is how i got that to work all right, so now let's talk about my handlebar setup and stem setup. My very first video I made of this, I said that was one of the first things you should change. And again, I still stand by that. I do believe that is one of the first things you should change. I think the stem and the handlebars that come on this bike are going to hold that bike back or hold this bike back quite a bit. So I kind of went with the Spank Suite. <laughs> so as you can see, I have some pretty cool Spank grips. I went with a Spank stem. And I went with some Spank handlebars, and I really like what it did to this bike. Again, just made it look way more dirt jumper-ish because that's what my entire aim for this build was to do, was to make this look like a dirt jumper. Right, while we're up here on the cockpit, I also did change to one hydraulic brake. And as you can see, I got a, quite a bit of extra slack right here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to shorten that or not. Maybe someday I'll learn how to do a bar spin. <laughs> but... To get the hoses to work with these, so these are made for the cable to come out, I actually ended up taking a drill and drilling out those holes and then filing it down. So I had to drill out that and I drilled out this one down here as well. And it did, the cable was shaking a little bit, so I wrapped some Gorilla Glue tape right there in there and then I zip tied it to kind of help with the vibrations from the actual hose. But of course, for me personally, I just, Hydraulic brakes are just absolutely so much better than cable actuated. So that's why I did that. Well, that is everything I have done to my Huffy Scout. It was a very, very fun build. I do not regret anything that I did on this build myself, but the things that I would recommend you to do or not to do are these things. The wheel set and the actual uh, tires are not necessary at all. The wheel set and tires that come on the Huffy Scout, they work absolutely fine. And I would tell you to just keep them unless you're wanting to change maybe potentially to a Shimano drive style so you don't have to use the free wheel. But then you're still getting to the point of, you know, if you're trying to keep this budget friendly, it's kind of a lost cause. Don't have to do a, a hydraulic brake. The brakes that come on it work fine. They're nothing stupendous by any means, but they'll help you stop. The uh, fork, is something I do highly recommend to change. Uh, the fork that it comes on for me, I weigh about 170-ish. It, it's, it's a pogo stick, it really is. And it's so, so springy. Almost kind of surprised me with how springy it really was. But, so I do highly recommend doing that. Um, the seat post saddle and seat post clamp, not necessary at all. The seat and seat post and the seat post clamp that it comes with work and there's no reason to change them. But again, I only change them for looks. The cockpit, you don't have to change the Spank Spoon stuff, obviously, like I did, but I just really liked the way that looked. And again, like I said, I just, I just saw so much potential in this Huffy Scout that I just 
kind of went a little more a little more into it than I should have in all fairness for being a budget build but the cool thing about this build is if you do get this frame you don't have to do the things that I did and you can get a very decent dirt jumper for around $500 give or take and that's for a $230 fork that's for changing it to the one by with the IXF crank set and then the free will for the actual back and then if you change the stem and the handlebars just to some of those wake stem and handlebars like I said I mean you're gonna be looking at right around 500 and that's with the price of the bike depending on how much you get it for and for doing those few changes it really makes it a terrific dirt jumper in my opinion but it's been really fun taking this to the actual parks and things like that and people just ask about it and it's it's cool it's it's a head turner it confuses people because they see the huffy on it and they're just like oh, it's a huffy bike and i'm like yeah it's a huffy bike and it's just so much fun for me and i i love doing that and i love letting other people ride it and they're just like oh it's actually really nice and but no it's it's been awesome but very strange build very fun build but as usual if you have any questions over this build or if i missed something that you wanted me to touch on please put them in the comments i typically get back to you guys as quick as i possibly can some days i'm busy so it just depends but as usual, thank you so very much for tuning in, and until next time, I will see you all later.